it's Rachel. Today on Crack Your Bible, we need to talk about one of the biggest, most widely celebrated holidays in the entire world. More than a billion people celebrate this holiday. And over the 40 days that encompass not only the 15 days of this actual holiday, it's 15 days long, but all of the days leading up to it, these billion people are going to take place in the largest human migration in the entire world. And it happens every single spring as these people make up to three billion trips to visit friends and family to celebrate these festivities. Now this weekend, I know that if you're looking for something to do, you are going to find a free event in your community. I don't care where you live, even here in the West, you will for sure find an activity centered around this holiday. And if your pastor's not talking about it, he needs to, because we need to know, is this a neutral, just cultural celebration, or is this something that Christians need to be aware of and keep their kids away from it? Now, before we get started, make sure you hit subscribe with the bell, with the parentheses, so you're notified of a new gospel message. Because of course, Satan and YouTube and Google, they're one and the same, but they do not want you to know the gospel, and they will never notify you of a new gospel message unless you hit subscribe with the bell, with the parentheses. So let's get started. We are talking about Lunar New Year, also known as Chinese New Year, also known as Tet if you're Vietnamese. And we need to talk about this because as China grows as a global superpower, we're going to see more of an Asian influence on our own culture here in the West. Christians, we need to know what's going on because our culture is becoming a more multicultural society, not only in the United States, but we see it in Europe and elsewhere. But not only that, China is buying up huge portions of Africa because they hold so much foreign debt and countries can't pay it. They decide instead of taking the form of payment in money, they instead take up real estate. So we see that China owns large portions of Australia. They own large portions of the United States. So as they have more of a stake in our entertainment and our media companies, you're going to see more of an Asian influence, specifically Chinese influence, on our culture and our society. So we need to know like, hey, is this like all good? Are we good to go? Or is this something that I need to be aware of? It doesn't matter where you live, no matter how small of a town you're in, Chinese New Year or Lunar New Year is a big deal and governments here in the West are starting to take note. So in DC, they're doing events for this in the government. So not only is the government doing events for Lunar New Year, but we see amusement parks like Disneyland, Universal Studios, uh, huge museums like the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City, even small, small museums like in Houston and Colorado, like uh, Seattle, they're all doing events for Lunar New Year. And not only that, in New York City, in San Francisco, Lunar New Year has become a school holiday, so children now have this time off. Not only that, the state of California has recognized Lunar New Year as an official holiday by the state. This holiday is getting a lot more traction, especially because right now there is a cult that exists called Falun Gong, and they have a ridiculous marketing budget, and they are promoting this play called uh, Shun Yin. I know there's a lot of memes about it online, and they're saying, oh, this is like a great thing to go see for Lunar New Year or for Chinese New Year. And I see that a lot of people are now going to see these shows, even though this is like a cult presentation. And you just see the influence and it's like, hey, we need to like rewind and see, is this something that we need to be celebrating? You know, so many people will make excuses to celebrate pagan holidays and they'll quote Colossians too. Oh, let nobody judge you in matters of food or drink. And none of these pagan holidays are a picture of the things to come. That is Christ. So you guys can check out that video right up here because Colossians 2 does not apply to pagan holidays. But we, we really want to look at the Lunar New Year because so many people celebrate it. I mean, there are more Christians in China than there are people in the UK. Pew Research Center estimates that there are 67 million Christians in China. There's only 66 million people in the UK. Now, just like people in the West have strong connections to their cultural holidays, 
people in Asia do too. But we have to remember, we need to worship God in spirit and in truth. And we have to make a decision. Am I going to worry about what my family thinks? Am I more concerned with my own culture? Or do I care what God thinks? Is my heart after the things after God's own heart? Because that's where our loyalty needs to lie. So let's look at Lunar New Year and see what the traditions are before we come out and say, hey, yes, you can celebrate it or no, you can't. Because we want to be intellectually honest. And there's a lot of intellectually dishonest people, not only on YouTube, but there's dishonest people in churches. They'll say whatever you want them to say so that you will continue to give them money, to continue to give them views and have butts and seats. But again, we're here to seek the truth. We want to worship God in spirit and in truth. So for our first video, I do want to show you a little bit of footage from Las Vegas because I do live in Las Vegas. Like many cities on the West Coast, Las Vegas has a large population of Asians. But not only that, we have a large amount of tourists that come directly from Asia because in general, Asians like to gamble. It's not frowned upon in their culture. So, I mean, even in the Chinese pantheon, there is a god of gambling. It's just a thing. It is what it is. It's not to knock them. They like to gamble. So, Las Vegas knows who pays their bills. So, when Lunar New Year comes around, the casinos roll out the red carpet. Now, we do have a Chinatown. And at the end of the 15-day period for the Lunar New Year, there's going to be a big event. And... We will talk about that in other videos, but I just wanted to show you guys a little bit about Chinese New Year because at the Bellagio Resort, they have a conservatory garden and every season they change the display and it always seems to be Asian themed. And right now it has a Lunar New Year theme going on. So if you are unfamiliar, here's some of the general imagery of this holiday. So you tell me by looking at this stuff, when you see a pagoda, when you see the guardian lions, when you see this giant ding pot filled with incense that is used in Buddhist temples, to worship ancestors, just looking at this imagery, just from the get-go, what does this show you? As you look at the footage at the Bellagio and at other casinos that I took here in Las Vegas, I want to tell you the origin story for why the Lunar New Year is supposedly celebrated, because there is like a myth behind it. And I want you to tell me, after you hear the story, does this sound like something that you want to celebrate. Now, long, long ago in China, there were villagers and these villagers had a problem. You see, every new year during the winter, right before the spring, you would have a new year. Now at the new year, you cannot see the moon because this is when the sky is the darkest. The new moon has just the tiniest little sliver of light. It's almost pitch black outside. Now, this is very unsafe for the villagers because they can't see what's going on come nighttime. Well, there is a beast that lives in the sea close to the village. Now, the sea beast is very smart, and he knows that at the new moon, he can go in and attack the villagers. He can eat their crops. He can eat their livestock, and he can eat their children, and they are powerless to attack him because of the darkness of the new moon. The sky is almost completely dark, so under the cover of darkness, this beast comes out of the sea and eats the villagers. He eats their livestock. He eats their crops. Well, after years and years of this, the villagers think we have to get away from this beast. They call the beast the Nian, which today, Nian just means year. So every new year, the villagers before the new moon would go up into the mountains. They would take their family and their possessions into the mountains to wait for the beast to retreat back into the sea. Well, one particular year, an old woman told her family, I'm too old for this. I cannot go back into the mountains. I'm going to slow you down and the beast might get to you. So I'm going to stay at home. 
Her family kissed her goodbye and went up the mountain and she stayed home. But out in the distance, she saw a man. She couldn't tell if he was young or old. But as he came closer, she noticed he wasn't walking, but he was levitating above the ground. This old man asked why she was in town. She said, my family retreated up into the mountains because the Nian is coming, but I'm too old to go with them this year. And this man who was levitating told her, I know how you can defeat the Nian. The Nian hates three things. He hates the color red, he hates flame, and he hates loud noise. We can defeat the Nian. So they go into her home and he asks, do you have anything that's red? She said, yes, my son got married earlier this year, so we still have the red cloth and fabric and paper. And he said, great, let's cover the whole outside of your house with the red paper to scare away the knee in. Now this old man also had a walking stick with him. And that gave the old woman an idea. We could get rid of the knee in if we blew up pieces of bamboo. So she cut down bamboo stalks around her home and filled each hollow tube of bamboo with a hot coal from the fire. And as the coal expanded, it would explode, making a loud pop sound. So she cut up multiple pieces of this bamboo to put hot coals in for when the Nian came. Now the old man said, remember, it's not only the flame, it's not only the red colors, we need to make loud noise. Do you have any kitchen knives? She said, yes, I've been making dumplings. He said, great. When the knee in comes, make sure that you are hitting your knives as hard as you can to make as much noise as possible. She goes, as loud as she can. And as the knee in comes out of the sea, the old man and the old woman stand behind the house covered in red paper they open the window and out goes a piece of bamboo filled with a hot coal pop 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 it scares away the knee and as the old woman slices and slices and slices making such a racket that it scares the knee in and the old man follows the knee in and they float off into the sky after the Nian went away, the families from the mountain came down and they were shocked to see that the old woman was still alive. And they said, how did you survive the Nian? And she told them that the old man knew of a way to get rid of the Nian. To prevent the Nian from coming back out of the sea and devouring villagers, People remember the words of that old man. They cover their homes in red paper. They make loud noises. They make sure flames go off. But instead of using kitchen knives and bamboo sticks with hot coals, they light fireworks. They beat drums. And this is how they ward off the Nian every new year. So that is the general story of why people celebrate the Lunar New Year, but we have to actually look at more of those traditions to see, okay, is this all there is? Because this seems like just a silly folktale. Why is this such a giant holiday in Asia if it was simply just a small folk tale. So we will be looking at that in our next couple videos, but let me know down in the comments below, have you all ever celebrated Lunar New Year? Are they doing any events in your town? If they are, let me know down in the comments below. And I would love it if you would like, subscribe, and share. And I will talk to you all later. Bye!